Awesome. So, thank you. Thank you, the organizers. Uh, so, as you have seen, uh, um, Ugo already spoiled my, my talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, thank, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here in presence again. And, uh, okay, so uh, what I'm going to show is very much connected to what uh, Ugo has shown. Uh, it's complementary. It's a long-standing collaboration that we have with, uh, uh, with uh, the Quantronic Group this for more than 20 years. And this is part of a uh, uh, European project that in which we are working, which is uh, called NQC, which is devoted to, th the idea is to use these under, under states for, for, uh, for physical realization of a qubit. So uh, very briefly, a motivation, um, it doesn't work. Okay, so let me uh, give a brief of motivation already seen uh, from the talk by Hug that uh, we are interested in this type of uh, nanowires uh, in which, uh, well, they have been, can be done with a high degree of perfection with a very hard gap, uh, proximity gap. You have seen already this in the, in the talk by Hug. On the other hand, what is uh, creating like kind of uh, revolution in the field of mesoscopic superconductivity is the possibility to explore these devices using circuit techniques or microwaves. And, uh, and these two things connect to a very old topic in sup mesoscopic superconductivity, which is the interplay between uh, superconductivity of pairing effects and interactions, Coulomb interactions. And uh, so this is having already introduced by Hugh, but well, the main, the outline of my talk is going to be, well, have, I'm going to have two parts. One in which I discuss the, the effects of interactions in a multi-channel nanowire Johnson junction. And in the second one, if uh, time allows, I give you some idea of uh, the theory of circuit detection of these states. So not only the line shapes, but also the intensities, how we can understand them from the from point of view of theory. So uh, about the interplay between superconductivity and Coulomb interaction. So this is a all, all story, mesoscopic physics, I mean, and everything we know has been mainly focused on one model, which is the Anderson model. Anderson model with superconducting leads. And there, the main topic in the Anderson model is the interplay between uh, the condo effect, so the fact that if you have an electron isolated in the dot, uh, the spin is going to be screened by the spins, the different magnetic coupling with the spins in the leads. And this competes uh, with the pairing uh, correlations, uh, which tends to uh, destroy the condo correlations. So this interplay between condo and pairing uh, is produces uh, a transition, a quantum phase transition, uh, between a singlet phase and a doublet phase. And, and the, the, the Anderson model is well understood, have been calculated with many different techniques, including numerically exact techniques like uh, energy. And with energy, well, you get the phase diagram for this parity phase diagram in the, in, the pl in the plane here of where they have the level position here and the coupling to the leads here, uh, where you see where for phase difference equal to zero, you have, you have this typical dome shape uh, separating the doublet and the singlet. And when you have uh, the phase difference equal to pi, you have a chimney-like chimney shape uh, separating the singlet and the doublet. Uh, and uh, this has been, in fact, confirmed rather recently using these, uh, well, secret QD techniques uh, uh, in experiments from uh, Delft uh, 
where they will be able, using these techniques and in a, a transmont uh, like uh, geometry, where you couple the quantum dot they find on a on an in the mouse and a nano wire, they they they've been able to trace experimentally this uh, this uh, phase diagram, no, it's a function of the uh, dot level and function of the uh, barriers which are controlled by by gates. Okay, but uh, what is this general situation uh, in in a case like uh, Ugh have explained with a nanowire, is that you have uh, a situation in which you have many channels, basically not not like in the Anderson model, which you have one level only, so you have many channels. There is a finite length. Uh, there are uh, uh, high transparency. It's not a dot, let's say. Uh, and uh, Oak has already discussed well what is the effect of the length on the spectrum of these uh, junctions. What is the effect of spin orbit? And now, well. We would like to uh, ask the question, what is the effect of interactions? Uh, even if it's not a dot, uh, in Coulomb interactions can have a role, and this is what we want to address. I mean, these two, these two effects have been already covered and discussed by, by Uck, so I'm going to focus mainly on the effect of interactions. And, uh, well, what I'm going to, I would like to convince you that there are novel effects beyond uh, what is, known from the Anderson model, which I call some uh, for, for her <laughs> friends. Uh, so already uh, Ugh has explained what are the type of transitions that one can have in, uh, in, within a non-interacting picture of the, Anderson mo of the uh, nanowire. No? So you have final length, you have spin orbit, which splits uh, the under manifolds and so depending if you are initially in ground state or you are in a poison state, you can have these uh, uh, spare transitions or single particle transitions. Here, the pair transitions are the red ones. Greens are the single particle transitions. And we have these additional elusive mixed pair transitions which are predicted by this, this non-interacting model where you, uh, you excite a, a Cooper pair and you put you place one quasi-particle in lower undrift state and one quasi-particle in the upper undrift state. Uh, so what uh, has been possible with the recent experiment from Saclay is to map these transitions uh, with a high stability as a function of the gate and be able to see the evolution more clearly. This is something that was not possible in the, in the previous setup from Saclay. Uh, but here, well, this I just reminding you of, of the results that uh, have been uh, shown by by Uck before. The blue lines here apparently evolve uh, in a parallel way to the pair transitions, but do not behave as uh, predicted by by uh, the non-interacting theory, where you expect uh, the generacy at phase equal to zero and phase equal to pi. Uh, well, so some, something to do with interactions has to be playing here. Uh, now, interactions in, this, uh, in these devices, we can expect to be very much screen because you, you, have, you have a back gate, it's a metallic gate. You have, a, you have the leads uh, which screen the interactions on the wire. Uh, the, the regions of the wire which are, which are below the leads are highly screened. So we can think that interactions are essentially present only in the normal region here, but highly screened, and uh, we can model them by a contact light potential, let's say only uh, at, at the point with some int intensity U0. Uh, if we estimate this parameter U0 uh, from a very simple, uh, approximation, let's say Thomas Fermi approximation, we need to know things like what's the Fermi wavelength here in the nanowire, what's the effective mass, what's the dielectric constant uh, of the indium arsenide. If we take a reasonable parameters for our geometry uh, or the geometry of the experiment, we find that the effective charge in energy here in this uh, normal region is going to be rather small compared to the superconducting gap, like uh, 10 times smaller 
and superconducting gaps of, of the order of 30 micro EVs. So this is a uh, uh, degree of in interactions which is typically weak to produce uh, zero pi transition like in the Anderson model. In the Anderson model, uh, well, you need interactions stronger than, than the gap to uh, kill the condo effect and go to the, to the uh, odd state which where we have the bias bi phase. Uh, okay, so Han Wei with an argument that has already been uh, put forward by Ug is that <coughs> if we have a, uh, an excitation, here I show the diagram for Andrev states without spin orbit for a junction with the length of the order of coherent length, so we have two Andrev manifolds, uh, but without splitting of spin orbit, I, I have, if you place two electrons there, uh, two excitations there in the two under manifold. Uh, well, you have to have in mind that these are states which are confined to the normal region. These, these states, the under states, uh, decrease exponentially or inside the superconductor. So they are states which are confined. So if uh, we estimate an exchange interaction, direct ferromagnetic interaction between the two arising but, but from the Coulomb interaction, uh, we would estimate that this uh, uh, exchange uh, would be of the order of this parameter U0 over volume, and this gives something of the order of five giga. So, and this five giga uh, with an isotropic exchange would split the lines uh, into singlet and triplet uh, with uh, uh, well, this singlet uh, is, is non-degenerate, the triplet is three, uh, three or four degenerate. Uh, this is what you get from a hand wave in argument, but it's not, it's not uh, what is observed, as we have shown, what you observe in experiments that all lines are split. Uh, so if you want to go or to be more ambitious and go to try to be more microscopic, which is not always a good thing to do, uh, you have to go into a very complicated model. This uh, tie binding model is, uh, well, the, uh, say the most uh, uh, mm, accurate or microscopic model we could try to do in this system. Uh, and you have to have in, mind, have in mind that we need more than one channel because we, we need multi-channel effect is important. Yeah. For instance, here we couple two, three chains like that. And uh, we have to add a final length because it's a final length is important for this. And then you write down Hamiltonian, the most general Hamiltonian you wish with uh, uh, potential, electrostatic potential variation, hopping in the, in the X, in the Y direction, spin orbit splitting, uh, spin orbit tunneling. And you estimate all these parameters, you can all estimate all these parameters from the discretiza discretization of the uh, continuous model where you have effective mass, estimation of a spin orbit in indium arsenide, which is known for the, this is of the order of 15 to 30 millivolt, milli electron volt per nanometer. The, the size of the superconducting gap is only present there. And you have to add interactions in the normal region here. So, which you can uh, use the a usual have a like interaction. Okay, but uh, well, this is a plot which Uck uh, have already shown that this is the non-interacting case. I mean, the non-interacting case as who have, have already shown with this uh, system where you have can have a, up to three channels. If you increase the chemical potential, so you start from a, uh, very poor doping and you start doping the system and you, you start populating the second subband, you will see that the spectrum, Andref spectrum, the non-interactive Andref spectrum, uh, evolve like this. Uh, evolve from a situation with the lower manifold and the upper, uh, the second manifold have opposite uh, phase dependence, so f f opposite curvature, to a situation in which the uh, lower and the second Andref manifold have the same. Uh, uh, curvature. This is because you start having a contribution from the second subband, essentially. It's, it's, these two are coming from separate channels. That's why they 
uh, modulating phase. They have the same phase modulation. And with this, uh, even if it's uh, non-interacting, you can start having features which resemble what is in the experiment because you see this, uh, this is a, the, the situation uh, where you have only one channel and this is a situation where you have two channels. You see these per transitions and these blue mixed transitions come closer and the, this, uh, uh, this uh, single particle transition go up in energy. Okay, so, but in order to incorporate interactions, uh, well, we can do something uh, approximate first, uh, which is to uh, take this uh, infinite gap limit. Uh, so if you take this infinite gap limit, essentially uh, you project everything into the normal region. So you, you, you just take the four sites, where we take four sites in the normal region. Why four? Well, we take four because we need two channels and we need a final length so this is the, like the minimal model in which we have these two effects, the final, final lengths and two channels. And then we project the, the pairing interaction from the leads into the central region, uh, and we get effectively one pairing uh, term, which is local, which is singlet pairing. This comes from the singlet pairing the leads. You, have, you project into the normal region, it's, it's a singlet pairing. And then we also get what is a triplet painting, uh, and triplet painting because we combine uh, local painting with spin orbit. So this is like with the Majorana business that you induce combining spin orbit and, and painting, you, you induce triplet painting, but this is a time reversal symmetric painting. It's triplet, but it's time reversal symmetric because spin orbit is time reversal symmetric. So this, uh, pro this is still uh, time reversal symmetric. So uh, such a model for parameters which resemble what is in the experiments uh, gives this spectrum for transitions. Uh, the, the green lines are the single particle, the, blue, the red ones are the uh, triple transitions and the blue ones are the mix. This is with, without interactions. When we include interactions, uh, what we see is on the one side that uh, the single particle transition go a bit up in energy and the uh, pair transition go a bit down in energy. Remember that this system with interaction wants to go into the odd state, so we favor the odd with respect to the even, and that's why the, we have this uh, energy, uh, this, this lower of the uh, per transition here, and uh, if we, uh, we, we, combine, we, com we, com we compare the single particle transitions, we see that the, the, there is a degeneracy at phase zero and phase five. It's still there, it's protected by, by Kramer's theory, from, from Kramer's theorem, we still have the time reverse asymmetric, uh, interactions are time reverse asymmetric, Whereas in these mixed transitions, these are not protected. These are, uh, uh, and this, this split, but do not split us uh, what we expected with this hand waving argument with exchange, isot isotropic exchange. In a way, the combination of the uh, interactions and spin orbit makes that this effective exchange is not isotropic. And then, then you see that, okay, there is one line which goes up, and but there are not three, uh, the, the other three do not go down at the, together, no? This, so we break uh, for the four the generators, the four for the generators. Uh, if you want uh, the, the phase diagram for this, uh, the parity phase diagram for this, uh, for, for, for uh, this uh, foresight model looks like this, uh, where you have, you see the, the phases which are called the zero phase, uh, where we have a, uh, the ground state is, is, uh, is, is, a, is a even state, and the pi phase where the ground state is an odd state. Uh, it, 
the, the position of the, the, the situation where you have the, the best uh, um, agreement with experimental data is indicated here. So you see, we do not have any transition at this point. We, we have an even ground state. Uh, uh, this is a big complicated uh, evolution, how the lines evolve with uh, different interactions in the model, uh, how they evolve with increasing the, the Coulomb interaction, how they evolve with spin orbit. I think I'm going to skip the detailed discussion, just show that without spin orbit and just with Coulomb interactions, you see the splitting into singlet and triplet, as one would expect for, uh, for, for this isotropic ex exchange. Whereas when we switch on both interactions and Coulomb interaction and, and spin orbit, uh, you break this uh, degeneracy of the triplet lines. And this is where we get good agreement with the experimental situation. Uh, if we want to, to get uh, the um, uh, better agreement with experimental, not using this minimal model, but realistic parameters, we go back to this, uh, this Taibani model. And in this Taibani model, uh, we do an approximation, we cannot solve interactions exactly, but we can do an approximation for uh, weak interactions, which consists in uh, taking the non-interacting uh, solutions, so the Bogolyubov uh, operators, or so Bogolyubov quasi-particles as uh, a basis, and, and we, what we do is to write the fermionic operators in terms of the Bogolyubov operators, and then we, what we do is to project the interaction into this basis of the Bogolyubo excitations, uh, but it's a truncated basis. We, we take a truncated basis in which we keep the ground state, uh, we keep states with one excitation, and we keep states with two excitations. Uh, we truncate this uh, to some number of uh, levels, which we call N projection, which you keep small, and then we get, uh, well, we get this uh, comparison with uh, the experiment in which you can see how the lines in this multi-channel type binding model evolve with increasing charge in energy. So you, you can see that essentially the, the effect of interactions is that you increase the energy of these the single particle transitions uh, the per transition go, go down in energy a bit, and the, the main effect is produced on the mix per transitions. The mix per transitions, which were they generate here at phase zero and phase pi with the interactions, they start to split. First, you clearly see that uh, well, this one line which separates from the other three, this is singlet triplet like. Uh, we see this uh, camelback, camelback shape, which is also present in interactions. So I think, well, the agreement is qualitatively okay. Uh, uh, for, well, we, we are happy with this uh, level of agreement. Uh, perfect agreement uh, has not been obtained yet, but we are quite happy. We think we understand physically what is the meaning of, of, the, of all these lines. Uh, and well, we see that while single particle transition ships outward and keep the, the generacy, there's full breaking of the generacy of the mixed uh, transitions. Well, and this is something technical which is related to uh, how the approximation converges with the number of uh, states that we keep in the truncation of the, of the effective Hamiltonian. But uh, how much time I have? Six minutes, perfect. So in these six minutes, um, I, I try to give an idea of about, about the theory of detection. I mean, not only uh, we are interested in understanding the, the line shapes, but we are also interested in understanding the, the intensities of the lines. Uh, so we did this work uh, in 2010, 20, with uh, collaboration with, uh, uh, with the Saclay people, where we uh, analyze the coupling of uh, Johnson nanowire in a loop 
coupled to a microwave resonator. So uh, the, the simplest theory would be I take the Hamiltonian of the nanowire with a phase bias and I expand to lowest order in the phase fluctuations. Uh, I get a, a coupling between the resonator and the, and the, and the loop like this. Uh, this is clearly not enough to uh, describe what's experimental results. We need to add or to go to second order uh, in this uh, coupling Hamiltonian. You have to take the, the second derivative of the Hamiltonian respect to the phase. Uh, look here, this uh, H prime is a current operator and this H double prime is like an, an induct, uh, inverse inductor operator, which couples to the, the square of the fluctuation. And then uh, we, we perform uh, just a perturbation theory to get the coupling of how the levels uh, of the under state levels and the resonators are modified. From the first order, from first order perturbation theory, we get a contribution out of this second order term. And with uh, second order perturbation theory, we get a contribution out of this first order term. And if we combine the two, uh, we get uh, what is a measure in the experiment at the end, which is the shift in the resonator frequency uh, due to the population of a given under state. And, uh, and, and this contains two terms, uh, one term which is essentially the second derivative, so the curvature of the level respect to the phase, uh, and then another term which contains these energy denominators, which are typically in dispersive, uh, re, uh, so James Hamming-like uh, measurements, which contains the, mat the, the these energy denominators and the matrix elements of the current operator. But we can have two regimes, uh, basically we, we have two regimes. One regime in which the resonator is uh, is largely detuned with respect to the under transition. And there, the shift in the resonator is basically determined by the curvature of the level. And there is another, what we call closer to resonance, uh, which is the dispersive regime where the shift in the resonator goes with these energy denominators as in the James Cummings uh, model. So we call this uh, from adiabatic to dispersive redoubt. This is not. Uh, only valid for uh, the under state uh, system, but for any quantum circuit, let's say. Uh, there is another aspect of the theory, <coughs> which is uh, how we drive the system. And, and uh, there you can think of driving or sending the microwaves through the gate, which is what is done in experiments from Saclay. Uh, or you can, send, you can just uh, modulate the flux uh, of, uh, in, in, this, in this loop. Uh, and by doing, do, by doing that, you induce different transition. Uh, while driving with the gate, you typically break in the inversion symmetry. And as you break the inversion symmetry, you allow for these uh, pseudo spin flips. Uh, remember, because of spin orbit here, spin is not conserved, it's so the spin, which is conserved if the system is, uh, is, is symmetric with respect to the inversion. But with breaking the inversion, you break the symmetry and you are allowed to do these spin fleet transitions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with the flux, ideal flux uh, modulation, you wouldn't conserve a spin. Uh, but nobody does this, really. And because always in experiments, and this is a picture we took uh, from this paper we had with the uh, Yale people, there is always some uh, elements which break uh, the inversion symmetry, like uh, having leads there, the gates, or the, even the, uh, on the nanowire, we have the deposited the layers, superconducting layers, which can break this inversion symmetry. So in general, inversion symmetry is broken naturally here. So that's why, well, at the end, uh, we, we, with this theory, we can fit not only the, the line shapes, 
but also the line intensity. So this is an example that we take from this paper that already uh, Uke have shown, in which you can see that the lines uh, goes uh, from, <laughs> from blue to red, uh, so means that the shift in the resonator goes to negative to positive, and this is uh, clearly going together with the curvature of state. So this is uh, what we call the adiabatic regime because in these experiments, the resonator frequency was like a three gigahertz, so much, uh, so very much the tune or with respect to these transitions which are at 50. So this is essentially dominated by the curvature. And uh, well, there are no selection rules because all transitions are possible because uh, we are breaking this inversion symmetry in this. Uh, just, uh, just one thing, Norm, is saying that we have extended very recently uh, the theory of detection, uh, circuit detection, to the case of an interacting quantum dot. Uh, this is modeled by the Anderson model. Uh, this is a work we did in collaboration with uh, James Paske in, in Copenhagen. Essentially, we need to calculate what is the admittance of the, of the dot coupled to the, to, to the micro resonator, essentially is the same as calculating the current, current correlation, the, the current susceptibility. And from this susceptibility, we can get both the shift in the resonator and the, the damping rate uh, from the real and the imaginary part of this uh, susceptibility. Uh, well, this can be done analytically in this, uh, infinite gap limit, uh, I, I'm not going to the, the details. I just show that, well, these are the type of results we get for the shift in the resonator frequency when the system now is in, the, is in an even state and the resonator crosses one of the under transitions. And these are the matrix elements that determine the susceptibility in a plane where you have a phase and you have the position of the level you see here a, a region there where there is no response because the system is in the odd state, basically. And just uh, to flash this, because I, I want to tease uh, Uke that we should do something with this data, uh, I want to show that the Sackley people have already observed the transition, the zero pi transition in experiment. Uh, they have this uh, single tone spectroscopy when you sweep the gate and you see a sudden uh, jump in the response, uh, which is signaling uh, this zero pi transition. Uh, and, uh, and well, there's a similar result from the people in, in Yale, uh, which are uh, going to be published. And I want to say that we can understand these results very nicely with a very simple model, which is uh, Anderson model and have to include an ancillary level there for understanding also the, the, um, the two-tone spectroscopy, but I don't have time here to, to discuss this in detail. So I, let me go to the conclusions and say, well, uh, combination of hybrid nanowires with CQQD are allowing us to understand the physics of the uh, states in this system with an unprecedented uh, degree of perfection of uh, accuracy uh, which goes much beyond what you can do with transport. Uh, well, we have, as, as uh, Uke have shown, this experiment have revealed for the first time the fine structure, like in atomic physics, a fine structure now for the under level coming from the splitting due to spin orbit. Uh, there are no novel signatures due to interactions from the mix transitions which go beyond the single level and so model. Uh, and well, about theory of circuit quid detect detection, uh, we have de developed the theory of adiabatic to dispersive readout and well, started to work on this uh, inductive response of an interacting quantum dot. And well, there are of course many open issues, understanding the origin of dynamics and dynamics of, of excess quasi-particles uh, extend the solution uh, of the interacting model beyond the limit of weak, interact, uh, weak, weak interactions. Going to the topological regime is another dream in this field. And now acknowledgement, uh, well, already uh, shown by 
by Uc. Let me mention uh, Francisco was a leading force in this uh, uh, theory of interaction work. Uh, Sungun Park is a postdoc, long time postdoc in Madrid. Javier Sorillo was in Madrid uh, for a short time and now is in Cartagena. And the Contronic people, you know, uh, Cyril Metzger, Leandro, Marcelo, Uc, Christian. Leandro is now in Bariloche. Uh, in Copenhagen, uh, we had this uh, collaboration, well, these people doing the, the nanowires and the uh, James Pasquet group. Uh, at the and I would like also to thank people in Yale, Max Hagen, uh, Bala Fatemi, and Michel Devoret, uh, with whom we also collaborated in this, in this topic. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Alfredo. Are there questions? Yes. Thank you, Alfredo. I have a question regarding the coupling you um, worked out for the, uh, uh, with, the, with the electromagnetic field. In principle, if you start for the minimal gauge invariant, uh, let's say, uh, light matter interaction, uh, in your, especially in your case since you have a gate, you should get both a magnetic coupling and an electrical coupling. I was wondering whether you had considered that and whether this would change, I mean, the predictions concerning the spectra. Uh, you mean for, for driving or for, or for, cap, for detection? For detection. For detection. Uh, no, we haven't uh, considered, you mean capacity, including capacity coupling. You know, we have not, uh, we have not, done it. I mean, the case of the Anderson model is quite straightforward. Uh, uh, I think there's not going to be much difference, uh, but uh, for the case of the nanowires, we, we haven't, it's much more involved. I mean, they say, uh, because we, you need to, to understand what's the charge. Uh, correlators there, which uh, are very much model dependent. So I don't know, but it's an interesting issue. And people ask, uh, what could be the advantage of capacity with respect to inductive? And uh, uh, I don't, I don't have a, an answer. Maybe, maybe you, you have something. You have an idea. I would say that the gate output. But <laughs> more questions? Yeah, so a complementary question. Uh, what about the uh, effect of the environment in the wire? You consider only You consider only the effect of the Coulomb interaction, but maybe there is also some effect of the environment in the microscopic uh, model of your wire. Uh, you, you mean, yeah, you mean uh, the effect of the, uh, okay, so you, you mean the uh, environment beyond the resonate or something like, uh, Yes, yeah, yeah. Of course, we can we can incorporate uh, in the theory some other um, spectrum spectral densities for for modes that you can couple to, and uh, and this is going to affect the the broadening. So, in principle, what we do when we try to fit that uh, spectrum. Uh, we put some phenomenological broadening, you know? I mean, the, uh, the broadening of the lines there in the, in the spectrum is, is phenomenological. It's not from a microscopic uh, model. We, do, we don't have yet a full understanding of what are all the mechanisms that are uh, limiting or, the, or what, what are determining this, the width of the lines, you know? So we, we take uh, this in a phenomenological way, but of course, it could be nice. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This this uh, would be a, a nice thing to do, but uh, we haven't haven't tried yet. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I just uh, in the last slide you mentioned that you are also interested in going into the topological regime. And I'm um, just wondering if you replace this nano wall with some like a nano wall with topological uh, properties and your entry level have some uh, spin polarization and does that affect the, the transition that uh, you are allowed to, to, to have in this uh, uh, circuit security uh, setup? Uh, yes, this, this is something that uh, Many people is trying, and uh, the point is that uh, the Majorana, if you say you want Majorana signature, or well, but in, this, in these devices, what you can expect as a signature of, of topology is that you induce topological superconductivity in the leads, and then you have Majoranas. Uh, two Majoranas, for instance, you have a junction, you have two Majoranas, but this is going to be typically very, very low frequency. The problem there is that you would only uh, be able to detect them through the transitions and the transitions to higher energy levels. Uh, I think it can be done, but I don't know if it's going to be a complete uh, demonstration of topology because, well, for instance, <laughs> We look at the spectrum we had, uh, well, that uh, Shala showed yesterday, you know, that you have this uh, per transition, this uh, two tone spectroscopy which goes to, to zero, like uh, uh, at some point, uh, apparently go to zero. You, you, you may have many, many different mechanisms which give you this signal. And uh, it would not be a complete demonstration of topology as you usually have with uh, Smajorana business. There are many, many different uh, possible uh, scenarios in which you can have. Maybe you have some localized level there which is coupled and uh, gives you very low uh, or zero energy level which is not a, it's not a Majorana. No? So I think, uh, uh, well, people are trying to, to work on this but uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to be a definite proof of anything, fortunately. <laughs> no braiding, yes. Okay, I think we have to close the discussion and move on to the coffee break. Okay, we, yes, we thank the speakers again.